Today we are going to take a look at AFL++ and how to fuss our first open source Linux binary to find a vulnerability. First and foremost, a huge shout out to Antonio Morales for setting up the Fuzzing 101 GitHub repository, which contains multiple exercises related to getting started with fuzzing on Linux. In this fuzzing series, we are going to cover a few of those exercises, but feel free to check out the remaining exercises that I am not going to cover. If you have not set up your AFL++ fuzzing environment already, please check out my previous blog post on guided hacking on how to set everything up. Otherwise, we can continue and get started with fuzzing XPDF. To keep everything organized, we first create our fuzzing directory, and then within that directory we can download the source code of the XPDF application. Now, instead of compiling XPDF normally with CC or GCC, we want to instrument the binary so that our fuzzer can keep track of the code coverage during fuzzing. To do so, we are going to use AFL's compiler version instead. For that, we first export the LLVM environment variable and also set the following variables and then use the configure script. After running make, we see that next to the general output of warnings and compiler output, several AFL messages related to its instrumenting the binary appear. For example here, we see instrumented 37 locations with no collisions and this simply shows us that the compiling with AFL's version is working. Finally, just run make install, which should complete pretty quickly and afterwards we can get started with our fuzzing process. Sometimes we want to take a break from taking apart and analyzing binaries to find vulnerabilities. And this is where today's sponsor Melkor fits in perfectly. Melkor allows you to automatically analyze your malware samples online using the sandbox. Head over to the melkor.io website. After logging in, you're able to upload, for example, a binary file by clicking on the Smart Scan option. After the scan has completed, you can either perform additional scans, such as dynamic analysis, readable strings, or thread score, or you can view the results of the smart scan by clicking on View Scan. The summary shows you several things, such as the risk breakdown, interesting strings, and the file hashes. Besides that, you can also check out the assembly, hex dump, file exports and imports, and the Yara rule created for this input file. Those features allow you to easily determine if a file is malicious or not. Go to Melkor and click on TryScan to test out their platform today for free. Alternatively, you can upgrade your account to unlock even more features, starting with as little as $4.99 per month, which allows you to upload larger files and perform up to 25 scans and 12 hunts each month. For the fuzzing, we have to provide AFL with some corpus files or example files. And to do so, we will navigate to ramdisk input, where I store the input files. Since we are targeting a binary related to PDF files, we will simply download some example PDF files and try to use them as our corpus files. After downloading those two files, we can set up our AFL command. What we are going to use is the AFL fuzz command, and this can look pretty intimidating at first, especially because you have to provide the options for AFL fuzz and everything related to the targeted app as well, separated by two dashes. But if you split the command into the individual chunks, it's not that complicated, and we will go over it step by step. To get started, we want to run AFL fuzz, and we have to provide an input directory, which would be ramdisk input in my case. This is the directory that contains all the example or the corpus files. We also have to provide an output directory where we are going to use ramdisk output. This directory is used to store all the files that might be useful, including files like the generated PDFs that caused a crash, or the generated PDF files that caused a hang. Regarding AFL fuzz itself, that's it, as we will keep it rather simple for today. Now we separate the command with two dashes and write everything related to the target binary, XPDF. First, we have to provide the path to the binary we want to execute and fuzz, which would be, in my case, home, Kali, desktop, fuzzing XPDF, 
bin. And there we have PDF to text. Those at signs serve as a placeholder, as those will get replaced with the input files generated by AVL++. Let's say our fuzzer takes our two input files and mutates some bytes and creates a new test file called test1.pdf. Those two add signs would simply get replaced with the path to test1.pdf and that's about it. So nothing too complex here as well. Finally, we will use ramdisk out simply because we have to provide an output directory to pdf to text as well. Hitting enter will start AVL++ and we get provided with several categories including quite a lot of information. Multiple things here are rather self-explanatory, such as runtime, last new find, etc. For example, runtime, we are running AVL++ for roughly half a minute now. Right here we have exec speed. Exec speed is very important and there we have our first crash. Because a high exec speed means we can test more input files in a certain period of time. Total exec is also pretty straightforward. It's simply the total executions AVL has done so far. So in this case, we have executed the PDF to text binary roughly 50,000 times. Then on the right side, we have total crashes and total timeouts. A timeout is something we can specify when running AVL, for example, five seconds. So if our target binary requires more than five seconds for processing the input file, it'll get marked as a timeout simply because sometimes we don't want to wait indefinitely, as that would be just a waste of our computing power and time. Below that, we have stability. Stability is also very important because if we have a low stability, it means that the target binary will not always behave the same way. So a crash input file might not lead to a crash in a second scenario. And below that we have our CPU information. It's very important to note that if we open a new tab right now and use htop, we see that from my six cores in the VM, only one core, core zero, is utilized by AFL. Of course, we can instruct AFL to set up a master-slave relationship and use multiple cores, but by default, it will only use one. Additionally, we have stuff like corpus count, cycles done, etc. Since we already got one unique crash, we can stop AFL++ for now with Ctrl C, which will tell us, testing aborted by user, we are done here, have a nice day. If we navigate to the output directory, we'll see the default subdirectory, which contains hangs, crashes, as well as some other information, such as further information regarding the setup. For now, we are interested in crashes. And here we have a file with a pretty long name, which is used to identify and tell us how that file got created. This file is based on the splice mutation strategy and id all zero just means it's the very first crash that got found. id 001 would be the second one, etc. If we run the file command on set file, we will see that it appears to be a PDF document, so we can try to open it in our browser. 